Hey, it's your Honorary Justice League Reserve team member Chris Ozchris here. Uh, almost messed up my name there, but here with some reviews on for some Justice League titles. So we have The End of Drowned Earth with Aquaman Justice League Drowned Earth number one. Uh, special number one, I think it was actually called. And Justice League Odyssey number three. So we'll start off with Drowned Earth. It all concludes here. The Earth is seemingly drowned by by sea gods and black manta with their uh transformative uh oceans and the the justice league members that are on earth have finally got back together in order to launch their final final assault save the earth undrown it <laughs> so to speak and uh uh so we'll start with cover i i like the cover uh coloring is not particularly my favorite uh, art style within the interior art, definitely like the interior art. Uh, although sometimes the, the faces are a little bit off, so like, yeah, <laughs> Wonder Woman's face there. But, you know, really can't complain. So, the finale to Drowned Earth, everyone's back together. Aquaman and Mera launch their special weapon. It helps them. The sea gods are defeated. I'll put that in parentheses. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, they're defeated. Uh... Aquaman and Black Manta have their, uh, kind of final, seems, seemingly seems to be their, uh, final fight, and that, the, that fight itself leads to the, uh, conclusion of, uh, not the conclusion of, will lead into, uh, Aquaman number 43, the start of Kelly Sudaconic's run. So, overall, I definitely, definitely enjoyed Drowned Earth. Another group great crossover from DC. You had Witching Hour and you had Drowned Earth. I'm hoping there's one for Justice League Odyssey, but I know the there is talks that there's gonna be a um a crossover between the three events. Uh hopefully it's good because I think the last time three Justice League teams had a crossover, uh they wanted to kill each other. I'm talking about Trinity War. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah, J J uh, J Justice League and Justice League Dark were at least two two thirds of that team. The other one was JLA, but there is no JLA anymore. But I know, anyway, <laughs> rambling. But definitely, if you haven't been picking up Drowned Earth, definitely, if you can find the issues, uh, pick it up. Or if you want, just wait for the trade. Definitely a good story. So on to Justice League Odyssey number three, and this is uh this is the start of uh not having Sajik on the art. Unfortunately, because of scheduling and because of the delays, Sager can only do the covers. Uh, I don't know if he's still going to, he's going to be continuously doing the covers. I'll have to recheck solicits, but from my memory, he's only doing the covers now, uh, which is unfortunate. But who who they got as a, his replacement are uh, Brion's. Uh, I'm going to find the full name. Uh, Philippe. Philippe Brion's. I uh, gotta say, I do, I do like Philippe's art. It's actually not that bad. While I, while uh, I do like a, a Sajik's art, uh, Philippe isn't really that bad of a um, replacement. Uh, although sometimes the, the faces, <laughs> sometimes like <laughs> Jessica, Jessica's face. What? Why is she a ghost now? <laughs> what happened? Why did she be become an old woman ghost? <laughs> But anyway, regardless, I still like the art for the most part. Uh, but continuing on from the previous issue, Starfire seems to be infected with this uh, by something, as a uh, cyborg says. Uh, she got infected by something, and uh, they're they're able to uh, rescue her, subdue her, and escape from the crumbling temple. And they go off to look for help. For, uh, Look for a cure, and we're also introduced introduce this character called Rapture, who looks ex pretty much exactly like Azrael. Uh, considering that Azrael is one of these supposed like old gods that are worshipped uh, in the ghost sector, of course there's going to be one that looks like him. So we have Rapture looking like uh, old Azrael. Uh, probably, I'm assuming that's why Azrael got a new costume for um Justice League Odyssey, you got the uh space bat looking space bat Azrael looking costume because uh someone else was gonna use the his old one uh, or at least look like him so it would have been would have been a confusing 
But uh, Asriel and Jessica go look for help while Cyborg tends to uh, Starfire and they're able to get someone to help while uh, while uh, wannabe Bat Replacement and uh, uh, Thick Crews <laughs> encounter uh, some enslaved uh, Koluans. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but uh, pretty much they're enslaved because, well, one of you, one of your people enslaved us. It's only right for you know, eye for an eye. We'll do it to you. So, so of course the two aren't going to accept that, and they intervene. And I'm gonna leave it there. This is definitely another good issue. While it's unfortunate that Sajik is um, no longer going to be the interior art, uh, who they have the who they've replaced him with. Uh, didn't do a bad job, apart from the odd faces, uh, especially that uh, the Jessica one, the Green Lantern one. Um, uh, Philippe Brion's is is a good artist. So from what I've seen, not familiar with uh, any other work that they've done, but I've liked what I saw so far, and it's another good issue. And that's it for these two Justice League titles. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next.